Lake Mine the Sky, The Diary of a Progressive Rock Musician, Chapter 6. Even my career was far off and inconsequential. Indeed, I was just an entity of perception removed from my personality and life history. It was a pleasant feeling. The next morning, I walked through the mist to a forest and glade where I sat on a rock. It was a mossy rock, very low to the ground. Birds chirped around. They seemed sedated, not so loud. Picking a mushroom at the base of the rock, I looked up through the fog framed by high trees dissolving. The shroom was beige with purple flecks and thin, dark lines. A rabbit had hopped into the glade, bobbed up and down in a veil of mist. It eventually made its way over to me and stared with inquisitive eyes. I threw it the mushroom and it chomped down. For a moment, I envisioned an audience member watching one of our gigs and we'd play just anything and they'd bite into it. Then I saw a hall of mirrors appearing out of the mist from the dark columns of the trees. In each mirror was a moving image of myself at various stages of my life, both past and future. I was surprised to see myself as an old man in a wheelchair, basking in a tropical sun. Then there was a child adored by parents and others as they carried me around a garden party. Then there was a man wearing an expensive suit. He looked rich and powerful. I was a few years older, dressed colorfully, quite a dandy. I was signing a contract or some type of document. Then there I was, lifting a guitar from the sofa, middle-aged, burnt out maybe, creaking joints. I felt tired and uninspired. My wife coughed in an adjacent room while watching soap operas. It was a nice house, as I could see in this hazy dream, in this hazy vision. I plucked a few notes, then tried to strum vigorously. I couldn't get the rhythm going. I felt the song was going nowhere. And then there was a set list for our upcoming tour, yet I was trying to write a new tune. I wanted something to put on the next album. God, we started a North American tour in five days. I had to rehearse some of the old songs. Maybe on the road I'd get ideas. Then I was a kid, five years old, looking up at the sun through clouds as the winter finally was breaking up into spring. It'd be so gloom, just so gloomy, always overcast. You could see, though, that the warmer season was starting. In the wink of a bright flower, the rustle of bees and insects in the grass. The earth was big then, a huge planet. From my child's viewpoint, everything was just a big, mysterious place with unseen shores, havens of discovery, and I'd go to these places someday. Afternoon had me back at Thomas's basement with the band, rehearsing some new tunes and getting ready for the gig in Brighton. Bring the bass line in good and strong, Thomas urged Mike. Mike's fingers moved up and down the fretboard, playing the signature riff of the tune. Thomas rolled in with the drums and cymbal, accenting the last bit before I slammed a heavy bar chord, and Mike was nearly screaming the plaintive lyrics, then a bank of strong chords on the organ. It was a really potent song, and it'd be sure to sober up the frenetic dancers, keep them newly focused on the profundity of meaning. Other tunes were more danceable, and the Brighton crowd at a seaside ballroom would enjoy themselves. They'd have to think after that, though, on the more esoteric meanings of the quieter tunes. I mean, we, we just didn't want to be a party band for some ale-swigging louts and tarts getting drunk. When we arrived in Brighton, we took a, a walk along the Strand and breathed in the sea air and late afternoon sun. Talk about birds. Besides the ubiquitous seagulls, there were certainly lots of girls strolling about in mini skirts and colorful pullovers and knee-high boots. Real cuties, and they definitely done up their hairdos. That was, as this was, indeed Friday, and Friday night was coming. We stopped at a pub for a beer and steak and kidney pie. First time we'd eaten that day except for morning tea. Mike went into one of his long philosophical discourses about the nature of time and reality. Oh, so you wouldn't think the bassist in a rock band would have any deep thoughts about the paradox of time we find ourselves locked into. Well, I've got some thoughts and I want you to all listen attentively at least. Consider what I have to say. Well, right now we're this struggling band. Kids who grew up in modest middle class homes, nothing too posh in our lives at all and no pretensions. Pretty honest, humble chaps. We're looking at the future thinking, oh yeah, we're gonna be a famous group someday and get rich. I mean, really a lot of money. But I'm not sure we know the obstacles to that and the narrow chances of success we have. We'll be knocking on doors 
while our best years pass, while other groups are rising up with hits and they'll be in their prime, young and energetic, having fun and will be like 30. Geez, before we get anywhere and the world will be turning, the sun will rise and set and we'll all be growing into fatherhood and our girlfriends will, turn, will just turn into wives and all the while the next worldwide cataclysm will occur or perhaps the apocalypse and it's only a matter of time one decade according to schedule that there will be explosions on the sun and meteors heading toward earth a new ice age and armageddon john swallowed some pie and gulped his beer then he burped and said yeah you're right <laughs>